I'm Sarah Seely, the Outreach Coordinator for the Office of Interdisciplinary Programs. On behalf of our office and the Interprofessional Educators and Practitioners Association, I want to thank you for your willingness to help with the facilitation of All Professions Day 2. Let's begin the training by reviewing a few of the facilitator tips provided by the IEPA Curriculum Committee. A few things to keep in mind when facilitating in a virtual environment. First, Research shows that facilitating groups in an active way, including calling on participants to share, is key to increasing engagement and effectiveness. Give students an early heads up that they will be invited to share during the breakout. This can help students stay attentive throughout the discussion and ready to participate. Next, we recommend using round-robin responses to encourage and allow everyone time to speak. This helps to ensure everyone's voice and perspective is valued in the discussion. Third, it's important to give students a few extra seconds to answer when teaching online. It can take longer for participants to digest and respond to information over video, and there may be technical delays to contend with. So use the extra seconds as an opportunity to pause before asking a follow-up question or calling on a volunteer. Finally, remember to mute your mic or limit background noise when not speaking. This helps to prevent feedback and ensures that the discussion can be heard by others in the group. These tips, along with a few others, are available on page four of your facilitator guide as needed for your review. We'll now move on to the format for APD2. The session will alternate between pre-recorded videos of our MCs and small breakout rooms where each facilitator will lead a group of students from multiple disciplines through activities and discussion. You have been emailed a copy of the facilitator's guide for your use in the session, and it will also be available via Google Drive at tinyurl.com forward slash drive. Your Zoom host, either Margaret Robinson, Kylie Pethod, Rama Osman, Raina Lecky, Vanessa Padron, Christy Barbie, or myself, will manage the videos, breakout sessions, and attendance. Please note, students in your breakout group may vary slightly over the course of the session due to connectivity issues. If this happens, there's no need to make a note as attendance will be taken by the Zoom hosts throughout the session. For the agenda, the session will begin with a video exploring the remaining two IPEC competencies of ethics and values and teams and teamwork. This video will also introduce the code of ethics activity. We'll then move to breakout rooms to review each discipline's code of ethics in preparation for considerations in our new case. Video two will introduce the case and students will meet John and his partner, Gary. After reviewing the case video, we'll move to breakout rooms to discuss care considerations for John. Video three will then introduce students to the quadruple aim and a brief lesson on resiliency in health professions. After the video, we'll move to our final breakout group to discuss resiliency and mindfulness practices. You will then return to the main session where we'll wrap up our day with a final video from our MCs and a link to the JTOG evaluation. Please note, we will stay on schedule and should conclude within two hours. Now let's walk through what to expect with each activity. The first activity is the Code of Ethics Review. Once in the breakout room, each facilitator will share the hyperlink to the Code of Ethics document in the chat. Tiny URL dot com forward slash apd drive. The document can be found in the activity one folder. The PDF is divided into eight standards such as confidentiality or professional growth. Facilitators will assign each student a standard from the Code of Ethics PDF to review on their own. Multiple students will likely be assigned to the same standard due to the number of participants. Students will have five minutes to review their standard and note the similarities and differences between the disciplines. You will then have 10 minutes to guide the student discussion based on their review. After 15 minutes, you will be returned to the main room by the host. The second activity is the case study discussion. In the breakout room, work through the guided discussion questions on pages 20 and 21 of the facilitator guide. A copy of the case and discussion questions will be available for students to access in the Activity 2 folder of the Google Drive. After 25 minutes, 
Everyone will be returned to the main room by the host. The final activity will be on resiliency and mindfulness. As a large group, we will all watch the video and then the students will be given five minutes to complete the Scale of Protective Factors, SPF 12, self-assessment document. After the self-assessment has been completed, the hosts will then open your breakout rooms. Once in the breakout room, each facilitator will use the questions found on page 24 of your facilitator guide to lead the discussion. You will have 15 minutes for this portion. After the 15 minutes, you will begin the mindfulness activity. You'll have another 15 minutes for this portion of the activity. First, ask your students to complete the Stroop test at tinyurl.com forward slash APD Stroop. Once your students have completed the test, facilitators will screen share the mindfulness video. This video is available at tinyurl.com forward slash APD Mindful. Once the video is completed, ask the students to retake the Stroop test and reflect on any changes in results or performance. All of these hyperlinks are available in your facilitator's guide on page 22. After the third activity, we will share the final video and everyone will be asked to complete the JTOG assessment. JTOG stands for the Jefferson Team Observation Guide. This is a national evaluation used to measure behavior in teams. As part of the evaluation plan of the Office of Interdisciplinary Programs, JTOG will be completed after every IPE event, including simulations and clinic. It is important that both students and facilitators complete the assessment. The link to JTOG can be found at the end of your facilitator's guide, in the chat at the end of the session, and via QR code during the final video. And that concludes the breakdown of facilitator instructions for the virtual APD2 activities. Again, this is our largest group of APD students yet, and we genuinely could not do this without each and every one of your support. Your participation is invaluable, so thank you again for your willingness to assist in interprofessional education activities on our campus. We'll see you on Friday.